All right, for this particular video, we're gonna do another logistic regression model, and we're also gonna put some focus on ROC curve analysis, and I might even talk a little bit about goodness of fit testing. Now, first, I just wanna tell you a little bit about this data set here. We've got um, two different years of data built into this, 2012, 13, and then 2016. Um, this is data from from EKU where we uh, worked with some of our students um, that were from uh, Western Kenya and we identified some of the risk factors related to water quality and uh, gastrointestinal illnesses. Um, we also looked at whether they had access to a public treat treated supply or whether they had to just get the water on their own from like the rooftop streams, uh, you know, dug wells and that kind of stuff. Um, so people had different ways of also treating the water, whether they use chlorine, household filtering, uh, just sunlight, boiling the water. Um, we also gathered data on whether they had a latrine at, on their site. And then if uh, so, how far away was the nearest latrine? We also had data on the ages of the participants, as well as the ages of the speaker who was talking to us. So there's a lot um, in this data set and um, we're going to focus on, um, I've got a variable here, we'll call it the um, diarrhea uh, 28. So that's whether or not they had diarrhea in the previous 28 days um, before they were actually uh, surveyed. We also had data on E. coli levels and that kind of stuff too that I don't have uh, in this particular data set. Um, so some of these things you may see 14. That's um, whether they had diarrhea or, or in this case like stomach aches or eye issues or nausea in the previous 14 days of the survey. So this was kind of a retrospective uh, design. So um, to run a model, we have to first uh, create you know a model, right? So we can call this whatever. We'll call it, um, what I say, diarrhea uh, 28. That's our model. We want to give it a name though that's uh, different than uh, I guess our our variable. I think the variable spelled a little differently than that. So then we'll be a general linear model and the thing we're trying to predict, um, well one, I have to make sure first before I do this um, that I've got our data set attached, right? And this is uh, International Journal of Environmental Research and Public Health, uh, IGERP, Kenyan Data, State of 11. It, so I've attached it. Now um, we'll just do a, a sample, you know, command. I just had this one saved. Um, so diarrhea 28 model, GLM, and then what are we trying to predict here? Um, we said we're going to try to predict diarrhea uh, 28. And then what aspects of things are likely related to uh, diarrhea? So the things that are related to diarrhea. Um, we know that being a child is a risk factor. Um, the gender may also be a, a risk factor as well. Um, it's coded as MF in here, so um, it may treat that as a factor level variable. So we can do plus. We can try it and see what it does. Plus, and then other factors that may be related other than their age. Um, well, access to publicly treated water, public treatment. This is a zero one variable, so we don't have to worry about the factor thing. We also have information on whether or not um, they, now some of these have NA, so they didn't answer the, the, the boiling question, but we can also do plus a latrine, um, or like latrine meters, how close is the nearest uh, latrine. So we'll just, Let's see, we'll just leave it at, at that for now. Um, we could also look at um, whether the speaker was a female or not. The person who did the survey, sometimes mothers know more about their children's health or the health of the people in the family, um, but they also may be um, more truthful than a man or somebody who may be afraid to tell um, some students from EKU, some Kenyan students from EKU, that somebody in their family has been sick, that may they may feel like that's a socially undesirable answer, so they may not tell the truth there. 
So I've ran the model with those things. Now, how can we look at the model? There's two ways we can look at it. We can do one, the logistic display with the epi display, um, you know, function here. And here we get this error that says length of die names not equal to array extent. That gender term may be giving us a problem with gender. So let's get rid of that, redo this, and now it runs. So like if I was gonna do gender, I'd have to recode that as like a one and a zero, that particular gender. So here we are, we've got, we've got the information that we are looking for. We see being a child as a crude risk factor is significant and as an adjusted risk factor is significant. We see um, public treatment having no um, apparent adjusted um, reduction and uh, you know one is included in there. And the p-values you can see are listed here. So uh, for preventing diarrhea, um, really the, the child is kind of the only thing. Now, that's just kind of the initial just how do I um, you know, I just threw all those things into this model. Ordinarily, when we build a logistic regression model or a linear regression model, what we would first do is we would identify these variables that have some association, maybe a p-value of 0.20 or less. And then we would make a model with all of those associated predictors that we think have some sort of biological relevance and then one by one we would do reverse selection so in this case um, if we said that we were going to use all those terms one by one we would remove variables so we would start off with this one um, by removing public treatment so i would click up here and i would get rid of that particular um, variable because of its p-value and then I would rerun the model and look at it. And now I see these are really close, but that one's 2.83, so it's slightly higher. So I would go ahead and, and remove that as well. And when I remove, I have to go to our last one. So I would remove the one that had the highest p-value, which was female speaker. So that will go away, delete. And now I will display this model again. This term is not significant with train meters, so I would remove it as well. So we're really left with just the being a child or not being the single um, factor in this model. And we see that the odds ratio is 2.03. The p-value is right there. Um, so what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that the odds of having diarrhea in the previous 28 days were 103% greater among children under eight than among people who were older than eight. Or another way of saying that is the odds of diarrhea in the last 14 or last 28 days were two times greater, 2.03 times greater than those who are not, um, or those who are older than eight. So 2.03 times greater for the children under eight or eight or younger. Another um, piece of this that we would look at, we would do then the area under, or we would do the area under the ROC curve. How sensitive and how specific is our model? So LROC is a function in epi display. So LROC is the area under the ROC curve. It's the exact same um, command in Stata as well as another stat program. So we'll do LROC and then what was the name of our model? It was Diarrhea 28 model. And here it does it. Now, usually this table is a lot larger, but since it's really just a crude model here, just one variable, um, here's our, our uh, area under the ROC curve. Right there, area AUC, area under curve. It's 56.8%. What does that mean? What does, what does that mean? So here is a way, and this is citing uh, uh, Hosmer and Lemeshaw's Applied Logistic Regression book, but it says, in general, an AUC of 0 0.5 is like worthless, you know, no discrimination. 
but it takes 0.7 to 0.8 range to be acceptable. 0.8 to 0.9 is excellent, and more than 0.9 is outstanding. So we don't have that. Our area under the curve is 0.56, which is not very good. All right, so that's uh, one thing you know you can look at. All right, so I'm gonna stop this video and make another one here in a second on how to also further interpret some of the information that you get from the types of output that are available from logistic regression.